Hello, welcome to the Scale Reviver channel. My name is John. Uh, this is a new video and a, well, a brand new channel. Uh, this will be my first video I'll be putting out. Um, a lot of stuff to to come in the future, but I thought I'd mainly sort of concentrate on restoring old um, old AMT Johan kits, so to speak. Um, and I thought this would be a good one to start off with. Uh, We'll take a look at them, the model first. Um, yeah, this is a 64 annual, only released in 1964. I believe tooling was made into the um, 65, which was then obviously modified for the for the Pro Stocker series. So uh, this is a kit which will never be reissued again. But you know, with with what Revel's got on on offer. Um, you know, it is not one which people be crying out for, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, this is how I bought the kit. Um, didn't pay a lot for it. It's basically the box, this and a few other little bits and pieces which I'll go through. Um, looks like the stock grill, custom grill's been glued in place there. Um your body has a lot of issues to be quite honest, a lot of glue. But you know, side trim, um side strips are all pretty much in good condition. Now, I don't wanna I don't wanna um take too much of this off to be quite honest. I wanna try and keep the, the as much stock trim in place as possible that um as we go up here we start seeing a few problem areas I mean that's one way of not having your spotlight drop off you just glue it straight onto the top of the fender um, but as yeah there's a lot of glue damage around here it's it's not on the body which I'm too bothered about is it's around these around these trims around here and this this back is completely gone you know completely melted um, yeah Back scripts are okay. Got what's left of the original tail lights stuck in there. Um, again, round here we're a little bit worse on the on the mouldings and what have you. Um, but there's the, you know we can do something with that. Yeah, it'll be nice to get this one turned round. I've been wanting to get round to it for a long time. Yeah, windscreen's pretty shot. Um, we'll try and sand and polish that. And rather try and keep the original glass but if we have to replace it we'll just use some sheet acetate uh, luckily the windscreen trim around the front is not too bad uh, we've got some what looks to be 964 uh, maybe it's 965 Corvette wheels on there uh, stock chassis doesn't look too bad I don't think it looks not even not even glued in place. Uh, yeah, I think that'll... and we got a bit of a disaster underneath here, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I think that's going to take cutting off. Uh, there's no amount of putting that in the freezer, which will release all that. So uh, yeah, we've got we've got a good solid base, um, something to work with. Uh, like I say, not a great deal of parts came with this, to be quite honest with you. Uh, we'll have a quick look at the box. Um, yeah, nice old box. I always thought this looked, this actual box out looked like it was an altered wheelbase. Um, which you might think, you know, that that's maybe an option for a drag car. But if you look on the end of the box, it looks exactly the same there. They've used the same sort of drawing and just... Um, did it in different styles, but yeah, that wheel base looks well off. Um, but yes, yeah, some Ford 427, that's certainly not there anymore. Um, custom wheels, certainly don't have them anymore. I've got the what looks to be the stock grill. Uh, there's no front or rear balance, I know, in this one. Um, no, not even a hood in this one, unfortunately, so we've got quite a bit to look for. Um, we do have that though, and uh, that's going to be an important bit for the build. 
don't have the rear tail light panel and but I think we're going to try and do something that resembles that um, main reason being is if you want to build a stock one of the stock 64 Ford or a drag 64 Ford which seems to be the only thing people seem to do with these um, you know you just buy the rebel kit you know a much more superior kit um, so I thought with, with, with that being said if it was an annual which no other company had released and it's never been released again I would I would probably try and look for stock parts and build it stock but you know we're, we're gonna go with something like that I think with the limited amount of parts we've got left um, which includes that uh, that rear roof panel but the glass is glass is really really nasty to be quite fair so I'm hoping we can well it's it's loose so it's hopefully we'll get it off and be able to do something with that and that'll be a bit harder to build that bit out of sheet acetate but you know it, it can be done if, if needed um, you can tell that's been glued on there before hence all the all the damage on there usually probably what I'd do is I would get rid of that trim I want to try and keep that trim um, which means yeah might have a problem blending that in if we decide to fill it but yeah could be a could be a hatchback an early hatchback um, but yeah so we've got that. I think the only other things we'll have a look at the rest of these parts which were which were included like I say not a great deal left whatsoever we've got what's left of the stock rear stock tail light panel um, yeah that, that's we could use, still use it again because I think the other part to it's in then in there so if needs be we can probably repair and fix that um, not much else to be fair so just some wheels, old roll bar, some sprue with a bit more of that roll bar on there and a couple of headlamp covers. But that is about where we're starting off with. Yeah, we'll try and make this into something um, and see where we go from there. Right, see you in a bit. So we spent the last half an hour or so stripping this down really not much to strip down but as you can like I said did as I showed before it was just absolutely covered in glue so um so managed to get uh the glass out of the body um and with the amount of glue on these things I ended up just splicing around with the uh sprue cutters just did four cuts uh that broke off the majority of um, what was holding it on um, but the glass was really really badly glued into there so and as more so the front the front screen uh, there was actually nothing on top holding it and it was just loose so that was a bit of a bonus but really getting this front screen out was the biggest thing um, something was going to give i didn't want it to be the trim um so the front screen got sacrificed uh, as you can see actually before i decided to sacrifice the screen i did notice just this little crack here so it would have most of it and all the other scratching it would have most likely have um been replaced anyway but yeah that once I saw that crack it was a bit of a no-brainer um, to put more pressure on the on the glass and try and separate it from the trim and that ended up giving rear glass okay still some usable bits in there um, and at least we've got a template for for whatever we make up for the front glass um, yeah the rest of it was pretty much a straightforward you know that just chips off um, grill came out okay 
So that's body, uh, interior. Um, yep, just pulled the custom seats out. We may use them again, to be quite honest, as you know, it looks like we're going to go down a custom sort of custom direction with this one. Um, yeah, I've seen it so it look too bad, to be fair, so we may work them in. Um, but yeah, pretty much stock interior tub. Um, ended up cutting them off there, which I have no problem with whatsoever in the restoration. Um, got the custom grill out. Um, managed to get them lights out which was a bit of a bit of a worry and luckily when i pulled the lights out um that seemed to take most of the glue residue which was stuck between um the grill bars so not as much clean up on that as as needed as rubbed off on the, the chrome here and there we'll probably re-chrome that or do something with that but i think we're going to use that for this project um being as it is one of the few remaining uh, original parts of the kit and this is the direction that the build was clear, clearly going 60 years ago or you know 55 years ago whenever it, it was but somebody started this um again we could probably use that if we wanted to but it's a bit too stock for the direction we're going with so that's most likely going to get repaired glued put in a, put in a spare box somewhere um, well, you can tell the amount of glue which is on that front windscreen because it's all come off on the top of the dash there. But dash isn't, you know, too bad. I've got some nice detail in there. I haven't tried taking the steering wheel out. I don't know if I'm going to. Um, it's on a bit of an angle, being glued in at a bit of an angle. But chances are we're going to sort of pose the front steering on this anyway. So I'd kind of tie tying quite well to, to how it'll look when it's finished firewall just popped out no problem um chassis again wasn't really touched so a bit of, i know it's thought that's a bit of a damage but um so we're going to keep this as a screw bottom um single load exhaust and yeah we'll probably end up angling these wheel backs and gluing them direct to the to the chassis plate so one we don't have a metal axle sticking through the engine or another it, it'll just give that angle when that posed position when the vehicles models finished so so that's what we've got so far we've got to start looking for parts now because we've clearly got not got enough uh, to build a model out of this so uh, yeah we need to source a uh, source a hood um not too worried about a glass we'll probably just make a glass for that um but yeah we've got to think of wheels tires um oh i did strip this down managed to get it out with very minor damage to be quite fair there is a little bit of a break starting to appear in just one of these lower things but you know we managed to get the glass out without cracking the glass which was my biggest concern it's just whether we can get rid of all this glue which is inside and out of the, of the it would be nice to keep that uh, it's we could, like I say we could probably do a different one but you know fabricate something else but you know there's quite it's got quite a unique shape to that so you know to fold down acetate and stuff i don't think it'll hold very well so yeah glad we managed to hopefully we'll hopefully save that anyway but um we'll start looking for parts um see you uh, see you in a minute so it's been a few days since the last clip a few seconds for you guys but you know we've, we're starting to get to the point where we're moving in the right direction um to finally get this this body and primer it has caused me quite a few issues with the amount of glue in it was just because it was all in the wrong places the, there wasn't much glue damage to the to the actual face of the body it was just all the, the where the trim was and everywhere you just didn't want glue to be but you know we're getting there um 
as you can see I've set the stance of the stance of the vehicle uh, we've got a lower rake in the front a little bit higher in the back um, the roof panel the rear roof panel which I was adamant on using has just caused me nothing but problems but just with the with the fit I mean that part was only ever meant to be grafted into the to the roof panel so there was big gaps everywhere um you know it's it has taken quite a lot of work to to get that roof to fit where I can either hinge it or think of some other way to attach that roof panel without gluing it to the body because I do want it either detachable completely or or hinged but the, the gaps around it were just an absolute nightmare to be quite fair so and also where this rear this rear um trim piece there without it without taking that off it it just didn't flow in at all to that rear roof panel so i haven't ended up um using some sheets some sheet styring to continue that trim into the to the roof panel so it actually looks like it, it's not dis that it's not disappearing anywhere and it once that's painted and in prime will probably do that center section in like a, a brushed out brushed aluminium and then bare metal foil the, the trim around it but that's in my head anyway whether it looks any any good once it's done that's yet to be seen but yeah we 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 are getting there it's we've got some balances molding and we'll go into that in in, in a bit but yeah it's starting to look okay um we'll start talking about yeah this roof like i said this i'll get this out of the way for a second just pop that down there yeah this this roof panel we've ended up putting sheet styrene around the edges just to fill them gaps a bit they've been sanded to the point where it, it does flip fit relatively flush it does need a bit more sanding at the filler there but yeah we've we've added this trim in here i did at first extend the trim just around this point here but it just didn't look right so we're gonna finish the trim off here and just let that lower chrome trim follow right to the end um we've had to there was quite a bit of glue damage in here so we've just filled that because you you will see it under the glass but like i said i don't know whether i'm going to hinge this or think of some other way to attach that but i've got an idea in my head but i'll i'll see if that works first but that's that bit done rear glass um i've just sanded this really i've it's got to the point where i think i've got all the glue off or most of the glue there is a spot somewhere which i think is going to still show it's just like a little tiny dot but i'm hoping this polishes up okay we'll we'll give it a finer sand with like two three thousand and then try and get that polished up with a buffing wheel um potentially you know dip it in a bit of pledge floor finish um but yeah, I think I think that's pretty much saved. Well, I'm hoping it is anyway, because to build that, I, I just don't know whether I'll be able to do it or I've got the patience, to be quite honest with you. So, with, with the body, like I say, we've set the stance. It sits flush on the table. Um, it's, it's not wobbling. Well, saying it's not wobbling, it's just... A little bit loose on the chassis but once that chassis is screwed down we'll that'll that'll sit absolutely flat as as you want it really so for hood wise obviously that was missing when we got it i found a few options in the parts box first of all was this which i believe was from a uh, probably like an early 60s mercury comet or something an optional hood it did have the the 
dome hood scoop. Not too sure where that is at the moment, but either way, it's, it's like a big bubble hood scoop, and I, I just didn't want to use it, to be quite honest. And even though that fitted quite well, it, I just didn't want to get involved in filling that big void in there. It's also a little bit long on the top, so that was one option which we're not using. Second option we came up with was I found this old 63 Ford uh, Fairlane body. The body's absolutely shot, um, but it did have a good hood on it, which we, I was thinking of using, but again, it's too long on the back, and even though this body's absolutely trash, or oh, it, it's still savable and I didn't really want to take the, the hood away from this one so that was the second second option we thought of no good so that's been and gone third option was using the uh, one of the hoods from this Revel kit here and I was thinking, well, that's going to be the easiest option because it surely just it's just going to fit in no issues. I did want a stock style hood. Um, this is just a scrap body because that's a sealed kit, and I don't really want to open it just for this video. Um, but this just didn't fit whatsoever. It's it was probably the worst fitting hood out of all the options. Um, it's, it's about five mil too long on the. On the back it was too wide on the front and too narrow on the back but I did have this a spare stock hood in the, in the parts box I've never actually had one of these two in one kits before but it just must come in here in a parts lot I've bought in the in in the past so we've ended up cutting down quite a bit off the back edge um, we've putting sheet styrene on the edges uh, to fill the fill the gaps. Uh, we're taking most of it out of the front edge because that's that's where it wasn't it was too wide on the front. But we've now got it to the point where you know it, it does it's it's fitting really it looks it looks okay and we I'm quite happy with where that is at the moment. Uh, body wise we've found some valances in the in the parts box I've actually found two of these front valances which were the same and I, I do think they were probably from either this kit or a, a, one of the Mercury the early 60s Mercury's and they did fit under there quite well but once it was on there it's had a few issues the, the front of this panel is really flat flat facing this one that was a big peak in the middle and also on these edges here it's really rounded out and it stuck out and it just didn't really blend in too well so I mean this is the same part as we've got on here but we've just had to take all these edges down let the let the glue set and sand quite a lot of this away so it actually blends into the into the body um a lot better we've just Put a bit of filler in that not done anything with the grill yet um rear valance i found it, this is just a random piece i don't know it's just a rear valance that i found in the parts box it was quite a bit too wide for the for the kit so we ended up taking quite a bit out of the edge and we just started to blend that in a little bit and I think once some primers on there, I've, I've fine finished it. So I'm hoping we don't have to do too much body work on the once it's in primer. I'm hoping I've done fine sanding enough to just pick out a few little minor faults before we actually paint it. Rear light panel, like in the previous clip, um, we, we only had the stock insert. I found this in, in the parts box as well and this after looking in the instructions for the original 64 this original 64 kit this was actually an option from this annual kit so even though it's not the light panel I wanted it's I think it looks okay on there and it's a friction fit anyway so if I find the, the light panel I want 
and I'm not happy with this once the, the kit's finished and you know I can pop that out and just replace it. Um, we've scribed out all the uh, the panel lines. Um, I'm not too sure if I want to actually have black wash these at all because I'm going to be using most likely it's going to be in a in a lighter color, and I think black washing on a lighter color it's just sometimes it looks a little bit out of scale. So I've just gone with rescribing all these lines getting them sorted out same with the boot lid um, that's all been rescribed out and um, the star as well um, this as you saw in the last clip was really heavily heavily glued and I didn't think we'd save that to be quite honest but I just ended up cutting into it first of all with a razor saw just to, if I started with a scriber, it just would have, it wouldn't have been straight at all, um, cutting through all that, that glue mess. Um, so I started, I just started cutting it with a razor saw, and then I finished it off with, with the scriber once we got a straight line in there. So I'm quite pleased with how, was that, how that's come out. And because the roof will either be hinged or the rear section will be hinged or detachable, you know, there is a possibility we're still going to see that so i did want to I, I did want to do something with it before we start throwing primer on it um so yeah the wheels they've gone with a i always had it in my mind i wanted this to have that sort of 60s performance custom look so i've, I've gone with these five spoke mags I've I think potentially they're from one of the early AMT Model T double kits. I could be wrong, to be quite honest with you, but you know they look right in there. Um, they're going to be on the sixties Firestone cross plies, which AMT have started reintroducing into all all their reissues for these vintage kits. Um, I think originally they would have been more compact size tires with the kit just because it was you know it's close to a compact vehicle or is mid-size so to speak but so i was a bit dubious about using the bigger tires but they do fit really well underneath there um to get them to get even these tires to fit it was a bit of a we've had to take a lot out of these wheel backs I've had to shorten the metal back axle to to make them roll under there um, I just started sanding the on the front I just started sanding those at a bit of an angle so once it's complete you know it, I know people be screaming at it saying well you know it's, you're just gluing wheel backs to the chassis but it's a 60s 60s kit and you know there's not much detail underneath it and it's how i kind of like to build build my stuff i don't want it, they just look better on the on the shelf with a bit of a posed front front suspension so to speak so um engine wise after all the body work i just wanted an easy option to be quite fair um so i just went i had a spare 406 cubic inch engine which comes with the 63 Ford Galaxy um, and even that took a I thought that would just be a straight fit to be quite honest but it, it wasn't at all um, we've had to notch a little bit out of the transmission notch a bit out of the oil pan um, filling the holes in some fashion where the axle would have gone through because there's going to be no axle in there anymore but yeah we're just going to paint that up and then detail paint everything around it and you know that, that's one one thing done which i don't really have to worry about i'm not too sure whether i'm going to detail it up too much whether i'm going to even bother wiring it it might just you know once that's finished i'll i think at that stage i'll probably just want to throw in the engine bay and 
get that part finished off. But but yeah, we we're certainly getting there. I think. I mean, I know I'm not showing you the how tos on you know what I'm doing, but this is already going to be a long video as it is. I think this actual clip's going to be probably one of the longest parts of the video. Um, I did find some of the original wheels in, in my parts lot, you know, I do organise my stuff quite well, but I think they were the original custom wheels, but again, deciding not to use them, um, just to go with the, with a different kind of look uh, to the finish, finish kit. So, yeah, all I know, like I say, I'm I'm not really going through the how tos, but you now I'm just using basic stuff really for the trim. I'm using evergreen, whatever size that is. Um, that's pretty much what I've used for years and years. To be quite fair, and, you know, it seems to work well for that for, for this kind of work. Uh, filler wise, I'm just using bumper fix the reason being it is for plastics and it will flex and it doesn't shrink i mean this is this stuff is i would say probably nearly three and a half years old now reason being it's that's probably the last time i actually worked on a on a model car this is the first model car i've worked on in since 2019 i know exactly when it was because we all know what happened shortly after that all hell broke loose and I was thinking this would be knackered in this time but it's still it's still like brand new to be fair and it works really well I found it works really well in the past in, in, in the past just because it doesn't sink it's just like your standard uh, body shop um, two-part filler and you know that'll last hopefully forever to be quite fair so sanding wise you know all I've used are these cheap sticks from you know home bargains which we've got over here in the uk will be like the equivalent to walmart over over in the us scribing yeah just got the tamiya panel scriber um yeah and for filling i just you know i'm i'm from a body shop background we used to use these onion boards all the time um get them on ebay but you know there's like 120 sheets on this for six seven quid and you just rip them off once you've once you've used one one side but um so yeah like i say we're we're finally finally looking at getting this into primer um yeah so i think the next time you'll see this it will be in primer and we'll probably have the chassis painted um, and then we see where what else we need to what else we need to find from there on not even touched the interior yet not even thought about that but so yep next time you see it hopefully in primer and nearing the end because then it'll just be paint and putting everything back together so See you in a second. So just one last very quick update before we get this into primer. I just thought I'd show you what I've done with this rear roof section and how we're going to attach this. I was talking about hinging it, but I just think with how poorly fitting this, this roof was and the amount of work that's gone in into it just to get it something like, I think, hinging it, it just would have never sat right. So what I've gone with is using magnets. Um, these are two by one millimetre magnets. I paid about five quid off eBay for 250 of them, so I've got enough to last me a lifetime. I just cut down these brake caliper parts, cut the brake caliper off them. Uh, they fit these in absolutely perfect, so super glued them in place. Put another two on the on the bottom here. Um, once that was done. I just masked that firmly in place so uh, it, it sat where I wanted it to sit um, nice and tight on both front sections and, and the rear section there and that was the firewall just falling off there and then I literally just dropped a bit of glue um, 
and the magnets literally found found them their own place. Uh, they, I'm surprised how well these actually how well they actually stick. But yeah, just drops a bit of glue in all four corners, drop one magnet at a time, and they literally just flew into the into the placement where I needed them to be. And the fitment now on it, I don't think I can get this any better to be quite honest with you. It's it's as nice and flush fitting as I can possibly think. And you can take it off. Put it on it literally just for, finds its own place so uh, you know you can give it, it as room for a little bit of adjustment but it it's where it needs to be now so right that being said um next time you'll see this it'll definitely be in prime and we'll start moving this video along uh thanks for watching as long as you have done so far i know you've got a little bit further to go but we'll try and get this boxed off as soon as possible Right then, I thought I'd just stop and do a quick update as I seem to be getting a bit ahead of myself on this build, to be quite honest with you. Um, once I got the spray booth out, I, you know, obviously I'm going to start painting other little bits and pieces, which, you know, I've, I've not done any work so yet. So um, I've decided to, colour wise, I'm going to go with a two tone. So it's going to be a, a darker blue on the top with a lighter blue on the main body. I thought that would just break down that roof line a little bit and make the car look look a little bit longer um for that all i've been using is alfred spray paint so far I've just, I've just used for the top this this sand blue and then i'm going to go with a lighter shade uh, this four paris blue metallic um which i think you know i think it'll come together quite nicely um yeah once started priming couldn't see any faults with the roof really so i thought i'd just wet on wet the the darker blue i also wanted that dark blue to be in this this side trim here i think with a lighter blue that'll be quite look quite nice on that um so prepping prepping the body you know that's that's ready for the roof now to be masked and that trim to be masked and i'll give this a, a light dusting of primer and then go over the top with with that lighter ford blue um i'll probably bring out the airbrush to to clear coat it um i think that my only aerosol clear coat you know i think that's uh, probably a little bit too old to risk on this uh but yeah i painted the engine the same color as the roof um i had to glue it in the chassis before i started any detail paint just for the facts that you know i wanted these uh exhaust manifolds to uh blend into this 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 molded in part here you know for that i just used this five second fix you know that just you, i think it's some kind of resin but it, obviously it drives by this uv light which is on the end so the good thing about this is you can drop a bit in and then dry it it and then keep building it up but you know for a, a quick fix and help you move on a little bit quicker i seem that seems to work quite well and then and the next to nothing on ebay i'm pretty sure these are about three quid on ebay um i bought this probably a, a six months ago and yeah i don't know what the price is now i haven't checked but you can easily look that up started detail painting the uh chassis i just temporarily put some screws in there just to make sure this this sits straight on the bench um there's still a bit of work to do on i've just got to do a bit of very light weathering on it just to tone that black down a little bit but um yeah i think that's that's pretty much ready to go uh, i think the next time you'll see this it'll most likely be in color clear coated with the bare metal file underneath i, I don't think i'll show it before because you now i'll have to base this up and then bare metal file all this trim and then go ahead with a clear coat so that's probably the next stage you'll see that body. I've got the hood pretty much uh, prepped, ready to go. Um, if I decide on a different colour primer, um, I might use the Tamiya White primer for the for the for the lighter blues. So uh, I'd make sure I uh, prime that in the same colour, just so there's no colour differences on there. Uh, roof panel. 
I just paint, I've painted uh, the underside with the light blue just because you know these little bits I made here you know they're you're gonna see them through there and I just rather them being the main body body color interior um, I just painted in like cheap pound shop white paint um, I said I did actually paint these blue bits in I think it was Tamiya XF blue uh, flat blue and I really didn't like it at all um, so I just went over with with crack paint in the end this centre console this is just from I think it's from the 58 Impala it was just in the AMC 58 Impala it was just in the parts box I picked out them door lines a little bit just because it just looked like one slab of door panel is we barely see barely see the engraving in there so I was going to flock the carpet but to be honest I, I think I'm gonna leave that for now I think I mean I, I bought this out just for the with me having to make that front windscreen out of acetate I, I find that flocking if it you know it, it can stick to me glass and over if I'm doing unless I'm doing something wrong but I think acetate will hold a bit more static than um, standard uh, kit glass I mean, I built this when I was 16 years old and 42 now, so this is a long time ago. But yeah, I, I use Ken's custom fuzzy fur on this. It's, and it, it, I don't know whether, like, say, whether I was doing it wrong back then, but you do get fibers sticking to inside of glass at, at the time. And to be honest, on, on this other build, I, I really didn't want to be doing that. So, um, but yeah, that's that's potentially another video you know I actually took that to the 1996 small talk um, model car composition at Stevenage um, I won the class actually but not with this not with this kit I was for a 55 Chevy I, I did for, like say that that's for another video I just bought that out just for just for the, the flock inside of thing which I'm, I think I'm gonna decide against but yeah I did the I looked high and low for some seats which match these back seats a little bit better but out of all the hundreds of seats I got nothing really matched so I've, I've just ended up sticking with these two here got these both painted up um yep they're ready to go other bits and pieces yeah I just started to painted this in the lighter blue um which the body's going to go in and just start picking out a little bit of detail on it. It's never going to be 100%, but it looks, looks okay and that's good enough for me. Um, also, I couldn't find that. I, I, I was looking for a washer bottle and a, and a battery, and a little bit earlier in the in the build, I couldn't find them whatsoever. And then I noticed them stuck upside down in, in these corners here. So, yeah, I'll get them painted up, finished up. Uh, that that was just a that was just a dash. Um, I probably this was really faint engraving on here, so I'll, I might try and stick up a bit of black wash in there. But yeah, that that's going to be as far as I go. I did have to break the uh, steering wheel off because I noticed when I was trial fitting the interior, the steering wheel was pretty much hitting the windscreen. It was a bit glued in it. So, such a high angle you know it's like you know to drive it it'd be like you tipping over a wheelbarrow or something so yeah so i'll have to took that off um glad i noticed it now rather than later but yeah that's that's another bit done um still got the glass to finish off you know whether i make both pieces out of sheet acetate or you know still use the rear glass that's yet to be seen still got work on the uh Front grill and rear tail light panel, but uh, yeah, I think um, the next video will probably be be on the bench, ready for final assembly because it's I really want to move this along quickly now. So apologies if you can hear me owing in the background. That's me cam trying desperately to keep him off the table. So, but yeah, um, yeah. So like I say, next time we'll be pretty much there, ready to go.
I found the water, the water bottle, water washer bottle, and um, that. Apologies for that. That was my cat just jumping in front of the camera, and I'm not going to cut at this point now. So yeah, I'll introduce you to that little terror later. Um, but yep, yeah, I found the battery and the water bottle. So then, swiftly moving on, um, as you can see, we're at final assembly stages. Now, I may add a couple of extra details in there, but uh, I'll just give you an update what we've been getting on with in the meantime. Uh, I've still got a second coat of Tamiya Red Clear to put in there. Um, I just thought I'd try and make it look like a, a full-length tail light panel rather than just putting black wash in between these uh, grill parts. Um, the tail light lenses... Uh, they are from the AMT 634 Galaxy. Um, now I am waiting for some chrome paint to come in, um, which would have been really handy on this build, but a few days coming up to Christmas, that ain't, that ain't gonna happen. So um, I'm gonna use Molotow. Um, I really don't like that product at all. I think it's really expensive and it just tarnishes off if you if you dare walk past it, but I think once that's pressed fit in the body, it's going to be in an area where it's not going to be susceptible of the rubbing off or handling. So, and it's just to, it's just wearing on all the edges, um, and it'll tidy up this bottom edge here and and these uh, grill slats. So, uh, I, I will just empty a little bit out and use it on a fine brush rather than the, the pen pen part. Um, front grill. We've cut the top section off. Um, it was a bit like this, and it it just met the uh, radiator support as a as a big flat wide section. I thought it just looked a bit too heavy, so um, I used a razor saw and cut that centre section out, and then just shaped it around the headlamp uh, buckets, which were which were in place. Uh, the front of the grill, um, like I say, still waiting for chrome paint. So I actually used a generous piece of bare metal foil on this. Um, it's got a very deep indentation, this grill, so I just sort of folded it in. Uh, it's going to be a better better chance of burnishing that out. Because um, uh, yeah, I didn't want it all crinkled along these, on the main sort of grill surround. Uh, I black washed this with black craft paint rather than the Tamiya stuff just because it wasn't really sitting, the Tamiya stuff wasn't really sitting in there. I think it's probably because it's bare metal foil and it just wanted to run out of those recesses completely. Um, the headlamps were the biggest problem to be quite honest with you. I mean, again, I've got hundreds of spare kit parts and they none of them looks right at all. Um, also the the headlamp bezels uh they would they were too damaged with with glue and no matter what i put in front of them you know they just you could see that glue damage before i mean to counter that i did actually i drilled all these headlamp bezels out now uh the center ones were absolutely fine but because i was being pretty lazy to be fair um and ham-fisted I was just using a sort of a regular drill and got through those okay but you know because there's quite a bit of material at, at, at that point but coming to the end there's pretty much nothing and, and as soon as I touched it with the drill it broke these corners well it broke this corner off and that flew across the room took a bit and under the fridge um, so yeah it took me half an hour to find out find that that was a lot of fun um, then I glued them some sheet styrene to the back of it to sort of make a, a new a new backing to the bezel, and even the lights they just they still didn't look right. And I was just in one of the pound shops, um, and I found some some of these cheap uh, craft jewels. Uh, the smallest ones in that pack just fitted in in place there and i think with it being a custom we'll we'll get away with that look it's it's a bit like 
corgi restoration on a on a budget but um I mean, I did go out as well and buy some proper burnishing tools to finish off getting getting them out of uh, bezels uh, hollowed out. But yeah, that that's pretty much ready just to fit into the body. Uh, did glass and roof panel. I did add, add a little bit of extra trim in here. Um, this is that's just a can't really get a focus on it, but. That's just a rocker panel trim, um, which cut down and then filed to the to the contour of the uh, rear window glass. Um, the glass came out really well. Uh, I've only got my finest grip sandpaper. I have is two thousand, um, so I, I didn't think it would come up as quite as nice as that. But all I used was the Autosol, um scratch remover polish on a and one of these uh buffing tools here i mean looking at reek i've had that since i was 13 year, years old you guys with a drama are probably laughing your heads off at that but it still works there uh, it's good enough for me for now um but yeah i mean it, it might be a few imperfections in it i was going to use uh the pledge dip in pledge but I really didn't want to get dust after spending so much time on that glass. I didn't really want to end up getting runs or dust particles stuck to the glass. Uh, and that's brand new. It's probably worth about 400 quid now. Never use it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, shy, I mean, it shines like a bull's tool on a frosty morning. That's uh, I don't think I could ask for much more than that, to be fair. Um, happy with that. Uh, the rear glass... Yeah, just I cut that away from the original existing damage unit. There was still a bit of glue damage on here, but we managed to sand it down below the trim panel. I think that's the last bit that's left in there, and you you can't see that. I think the trim is just sitting right over the top of that. So um, yeah, just polished that up using the same thing. Um, the front screen obviously it needs a bit of a polish but we've got that um cut to fit um i did it in three sections i did the quarter lights um as a different section just because i didn't want to put too much um pressure on that trying to wrap it around as one unit so i'll, I'll get a better shape to to that just by cutting it into three separate units what I'll probably do is use the five second fix again just to tap them corners in um, maybe one little drop in the middle as well and then I can go around the full thing with the, with the uh, gloss mod podge um, but yeah that, that, I've been using mod podge, mod podge lately and it seems to be working quite well for that I use that on the, the rear glass as well um interior pretty much all we've done with this is put it together i think we finished everything off in the in in the last video so we just glued the seats in got the dash glued in reset the steering wheel at a better height um remember to put it down in the sort of right hand down uh position just to to match the pose of the wheels but yeah, there's not really much to say about that it's a 60s annual um interior bucket so um moving on to the body um we've got obviously you can see we've got the lighter blue base color down um which came out really nice to be quite fair but before i clear coated it obviously we had to do all the trim work and it's again the story of this project is that I'm using quite a lot of old stuff and that chrome bare metal foil it was just it was so deteriorated it was hard to get it worked around without too many creases but also it was the bright chrome which I didn't even know I, I had and it's probably the reason why I still got any at all um, so I had to blackwash all that down because it just looked there's so much chrome on it on such a small car it, it just 
it, it really looked too bright so after i clear coated it um i gave it a, i gave the majority of it a, a black wash i mean in the scripts and and what have you and around the, the windscreen trims but it's not perfect it's not my best work but it, it's not too bad to be quite fair and and like i was saying uh after i was going to be using the airbrush airbrush for the clear coat but it was like half nine quarter to ten by the time i finish uh foiling this and i just threw court or caution to the wind and used my old um halford's aerosol clear which has come out quite nice now the only the only thing it, with that aerosol clear i don't know if it's the same but the halfords one especially after a, a couple of days of gassing out it does leave a little bit of a haze on top so i did use um just said one of these 2000 pads and just to give it a light scuff up there wasn't any bits of dirt in the paint or anything so all it needed is with a little tickle over with that um and yeah i mean that it's come up really nice you that it does hold quite a nice shine that uh for an aerosol uh the only if i'm being critical there was one little imperfection under the in the base coat and it wasn't there when i based up so i'm not blaming the paint at all it was um i think i was just i must have just caught it um when i was doing all this file work and i didn't notice it until i i cleared it so and it, it it's not a big enough issue for me to to redo all this work just for one tiny imperfection there um i think the only the only thing i haven't really blackwashed is the panel lines on this um i think with how deep i scri scribe these panel lines it and especially because it had the, the dark blue undercoat um it, it's got all the shadow it needs in there i think i don't think i need i could do any more to make that better and i think as soon as i drop tammy of black in that i'm just going to be really disappointed in it um so like i say i mean that the tammy of black wash is great but sometimes I, I just think it can make things look worse rather than highlight highlight the details you want to highlight so but yeah i mean that's uh, that's the main body um hood, hood came out the same um it really didn't need polishing at all but again well it, i think we'll i think we'll give that a bit of a a bit of a 2000 off so uh, just to make it match the roof and what have you but yeah, I mean, that, that came out pretty nice. Didn't do anything more to the firewall. That's just ready to fit. All the ancillaries. Um, yeah, the washer bottle, which caught the washer bottle, isn't actually the washer bottle. It was the um, air uh, oil cooler or something. Um, I mean, I know nothing about cars when it comes to engines, to be fair. I'm a bit like that cold trickle. Uh, no, absolutely not. But um, chassis-wise... We had to do a little bit of engine detail. Yeah, as far as I'm going on, this one is just uh, ignition ignition wiring. I don't really want to get into much else on this. Um, oh, I, before I get into that, I did just to hide those um, screw towers. I did put a bit. Of, I tried to mimic like a, a car support. I just got a bit of um, plastic plastic struts it was like a, a, a t-shaped one uh just cut it to the length of the fenders then pushed it up against the towers here uh marks out where it's going to hit then file those out with a, a round edge file um push those right in i mean i probably filed out three quarters of the material out of that part where it meets um pushed it in there uh, I'd been painted it and then I still wasn't happy with the shape so I just put a bit of extra shape in into the center uh just take some of the weight off it but 
I mean, we're never going to disguise the fact it's an old, it's an old kit, and I don't really want to. But I just thought that I'd add a little bit of detail to it there. But but yes, uh, we've done a bit of detailing on the engine. We're not going too far on that. Uh, the chassis, we just gave it some very very light weathering. Um, I just put a dark grey wash on there. But you know, say it's a one piece chassis, you know, you can if you've got a steady hand, you can pretty much pick out your own details there like the um like the all the suspension here you know as long as you don't go too deep with you we the depth of the parts you know from from a distance that don't to me it don't look like a a bad um a bad chassis and i'm never gonna look at it again to be honest once it's either in a display case or put in a drawer or whatever happens to it after this um yeah i don't usually look at the bottom of, of my kits uh uh tires i found some new old stock 60s original 60s parts so i just thought i'd use them on this the wheels they were a little bit um flat anyway and i, I so i just gave them a, a good black wash in there and they I, I think they've come out all right i think they suit suit the model when it's um when it's mated up to the body um, I did try and find out where these wheels, because I said they were from, I was thinking they were from a an early AMT double kit. Um, this is one I had in mind, uh, but they just come with standard craggers, uh, cragger SS5 spokes. Um, so then I remembered that the 64 AMT annual 64 Ford had them, and I've got one of, um, one of those here. But that's like a mint, mint kit and good luck in finding something like that nowadays and um what else yeah i've got another six four tempest builder um which came with them and i know the six four corvette came with them as well so it's obviously a wheel choice of amc points to a, a lot of that year's annual kits um but if you know of any sort of new releases which um they're more obtainable i mean i'm not too fussed but if anybody's out out there watching them you know just obviously put a comment down but um oh, and when i was looking for them i found this joanne uh old starfire this is a built up with parts but um and i've got plenty of these but i thought yeah there's some Quite interesting customizing parts we could probably i mean i've probably got four or five joanne oldsmanville um parts car so to speak so rather than ruin a good one can probably use that for a future project but yeah i think we've pretty much covered everything here so um the next next clip should be as all done um and see how this thing's turned out but thanks for watching again and see you in a moment. Well, after an hour of your time and quite a lot more of mine, um, I think we can call this one finished now. Um, after the last video, I just got straight to putting it together. I was expecting a few more problems with that going together than there actually was. It seemed to go pretty much as to plan. Um, and I think, yeah, it all ties in really quite well. I think that, that uh, two-tone colour works well with the roof. Um, yeah, the, the way we've got them, I mean, I'd actually prefer it without the roof now. I've, I've gone to all that trouble, but, you know, that fits on there nice and nice and tightly. Um, paint's properly cured, so I don't think that's going to cause any damage to the paint at all. Um yeah, the colours in the interior kind of go with the external. Um, yeah, I think it's. I'm pretty pleased with that. To be quite honest, it's it's been a, a long time coming. Well, a, a few weeks for me, two to three weeks. This one's taken just in my spare time. But yeah, I think the overall finish. You know, we we had a vision with that picture on the side of the box at the beginning, and we thought we'd run with something similar to that, but um give it a slightly different look with the with the rake and uh different wheel choice but yeah i mean i'm i'm 
I'm pleased with that to be quite fair. I mean, uh, we'll get that out of the way. Uh, I, I forgot to show you in the last video, I did paint the uh, headline white and I I also painted the inside, the rest of the uh, body in black just because I'm a tight Yorkshire man and I don't like wasting a load of paint on the inside of a body. And, but yeah, I think that like the grill, the headlamps even look right, the cheesy um, gemstones I put in there. Um, rear tail light panel, um, you know, that, like I said at the beginning of the video, it wasn't the one I would have preferred with it, but I think, you know, that that's that works really well with, with the car now. I did, after I put it together, I was playing around with a, um, some bumper choices and what have you, but I just, I couldn't find anything that really suited the car and wasn't exactly what I was after. I did a few different combinations of just, uh, you know, full length bumpers and also just like corner bumpers, but sometimes you just got to sort of call it done. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think I was going to improve upon it anymore, but you know, I think, um, yeah, the overall finish of the model is quite good. Um, since we painted it, this bonnet has got, well, hood's got pretty tight, but at least it saves me having to worry about fixing it um, with any magnets or anything. So, but yeah, the engine bay came out quite nice. I managed to get that radiator up into the car sport. I just sanded the back down a little bit so it fit into that narrower gap. Um, you know, just again, very minor detailing. Got the expansion tank in there. Um, I did run a, a wires, some wires out of the battery, but I didn't want to go too far with it. Um, underside, like I say, there's nothing really changed there, but we we got I had some new old stock um, AMT screws, so I just use them in there. The towers were a little bit worn, uh, the screw towers were a little bit worn, so I just when I was screwing them in, I just did add a little bit of Mod Podge just to give it a little bit of extra hold. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm really pleased with that. I think everything works well together. Um, a really hard car to customize you know there's there's nothing really on google everything's either a, a thunderbolt or even when they are custom they've got like that thunderbolt clone look to them so there's not a lot of inspiration out there to to sort of send you on your way and um so everything it was just what can we find in the parts box as we went along um but yeah i mean I think that's quite a nice, it has that 60s um, period street custom look we're after. I think we've achieved that. Um, even though the, the foiling isn't the greatest, I think, you know, that, that's what, yeah, when you pick up this hobby again, you sort of learn what you've got to master again all over. Um, like saying, maybe spend a bit more money on proper stuff to, you know, not to make your own life difficult, but um yeah so what we'll do is we'll we'll get this on in the photo box uh just uh to show it in a bit of bit better light and we'll get this video closed off um so just bear with me one more moment and you can get back to your christmas dinner or boxing day wine or whatever you're having so uh, see you in a second Right guys, well, if you made it all the way through to the end of this video, um, thanks for sticking around. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this restoration. Um, it was nice to, to get on this one and finish that uh, vision, which you could see the original builder had put in with that roof. Um, again, I think it's come out quite nice. We've got plenty more of these we can be getting on with. Um, I think these will probably take me between two and three weeks to get each one done, depending on how much work I'm putting into it. But we'll fill fill the time with some other things, maybe some vintage unboxings and, and maybe a few history lessons. Um, but yeah, there's, there's plenty more to come. So again, thanks for sticking around. I know this has been a, a long video, but 
I hope you found it quite interesting and quite like the end result which we managed to make out of that glue bomb. Um, so yeah, please like, share and subscribe. Do all that good stuff and we'll see you in the next video.